Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest is Loretta Blassingame, and I've been so looking forward to interviewing her. You know, when I say I've been so looking forward, uh, I, I think of a woman that you, you knew, Catherine Kuhlman. She used to say that on the radio. Have you been waiting for me? I'm so <laughs> looking forward to talking to you. But she moves, Loretta moves, in what are known as creative miracles. Organs that don't exist all of a sudden exist. I love it. I can't get enough of it. You see, this is the air that I breathe, and this is natural air. I don't know what you're breathing. Maybe it's smog or something, but I like breathing supernatural air. Uh, Loretta, when you were just 13 years of age, Jesus walked into your room. Tell me about that. Well, I, I had just accepted the Lord two nights after I did. I went home after church. He walked in my room, showed me a white Bible and said, I'm calling you to preach the gospel. When you preach this word, he said, I'll heal people while they sit in their seats. Now, your brother was really burdened that you would come to know the Messiah. How many days did he fast for you? He told the Lord he was going to fast till I went to church and got saved. And on his <laughs> 42nd day, he, every day he would ask me to go and I wouldn't go. But on the 42nd day I went and I did accept the Lord that night. So what's a young kid that all of a sudden has an encounter with Jesus that's not thinking about God, not thinking about Jesus, not thinking about the Bible, uh, do with that type of information? <laughs> well, for one thing, I went and got a Bible because I wanted to know what was in it because we were not going to church. And so I had to know what was in the Bible. What was I supposed to preach? I said to the Lord that night, I don't know how to preach. I don't even know you. He said, I'll teach you. Uh, do you remember the first person you prayed for that got healed? I do, because I went to church the next night and I told the pastor I was to pray for the sick and they brought a lady up that needed a new heart and I prayed for her and she got a new heart. Uh, you, 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 you talk like Catherine Coleman. She, Catherine Coleman used to say, oh, arthritis, that's easy. I mean, <laughs> anyone with arthritis and doctors would walk up, don't you know there's no cure for arthritis, Miss Coleman. Uh, but uh, you, uh, you, I'm almost hearing you say the same thing. It's easy. What about cancer? Well, I was just telling someone today, I've, in 49 years of praying for the sick, I've only prayed for two that didn't get healed and I'm not sure they wanted to be healed. You, with cancer, you with mean? With cancer. You mean that's, well, that's almost like arthritis for Catherine Coleman? Yeah, but Sid, <laughs> remember the Lord told me that night He would heal them all. He told me. And I just took Him at His word. I thought He meant what He said when He said, I'll heal them all. Well, let me fast forward you now to 17. You're uh, working in a ministry and there's an organist there. and. Uh, you didn't care much for her or, or she didn't care much for you or maybe it was mutual, uh, but uh, you had a uh, vision of hell. Tell me about I that. I did. I, uh, well, she didn't like me for some odd reason. I don't know because I had was, I came into the ministry new and I guess that was a threat to her. So I, she didn't like me and I was, be, was beginning to get some resentment in my heart toward her. So one day we did a meeting. I went home. I sat down on the side of the bed and I had a vision of hell. And when I went into hell, I saw people screaming. I saw uh, what well, it was just what the Bible said. I saw worms like eating people's face. I saw all kind of hairdos. Uh, people, hairdos I'd never seen on the earth at that time. You know, like spiked up hairdos and purple and like blue. Like they have today. And, like they have today, but we didn't have it then. Huh. And they were just screaming. So you mean that was already known in hell before it came on earth? Before it came on earth. And I used to tell people I saw that and they said, well, that's not happening today. And I said, well, it probably will. And so after the vision, then the Lord appeared to me. And when I come to myself, the floor was actually wet and sweat was just dropping off of my fingers. And the Lord, when he appeared to me, he said, now, this is where you'll go for having hate in your heart. For, and he called the lady's name, which I don't want to call today, but he called her name. So it really affected my life. Just still so, affects so my life. So did you get rid of that hate I really sure fast? Did. I sure did. I mean, I get rid of that really fast. So Loretta's minding her own business and she has two heart attacks and dies. <laughs> don't go away. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's 
Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Loretta Blassingame, and Loretta had a double heart attack. How did you get to the doctor's office? Well, I had the heart attacks in my doctor's office. I had just a lot of fire and, and pain in my chest, so I took my son over to a friend's house and I dropped him off. Then I went to the doctor's office and when I went in, he started working on me and I heard him say she's had a heart attack. The next thing I heard, he said, call her husband, she's having another heart attack, she's dying. When you died, tell me what you saw, what, ex what happened to you. When I died, I saw myself coming out of my body, going through the clouds, and then I saw two beautiful gates open in heaven, and when the gates opened, then I saw streets of gold, and then I saw Jesus standing at the end of a bridge, and he had on a long white robe, had a gold, kind of like a sash thing coming down the middle, and then he had his arms outstretched like that as to say, come, and so I started making my way toward him. Now you did see hell and you did see heaven. Uh, which one would you rather be I'd at? Rather, I'd rather go to heaven. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he gave you a lot of instructions when you were there. What he, did he tell you? He, t he uh, told me that more people would miss heaven for not having love one for another than any other sin on earth. He said that in the Bible too. He said, this is my commandment uh -huh. that you love one another. And. Uh, he told me that he was going to let me see heaven. I could see my mansion, which I did. I saw my baby brother. I saw my grandmother. He told me that many people had ministries, but every ministry was important. He said, I didn't set up denominations. And he said, some are called just to bring in a few people, but I've called you to bring the multitudes and the masses to the kingdom to pray for people the doctors cannot help. Did he uh, tell you anything more about what would happen to you when you came back to earth? He said, when I came back to earth, first I asked him if I could put my head on his bosom. And so he smiled and did like this. And he said, I'm sending you back to earth when you bring the multitudes and the masses to the kingdom. He said, I want you to take them from hell and bring them to heaven. He said, you can put your head on my bosom anytime you want to. Yeah, you know, I'm reminded of uh, Reinhard Bunke. He says, I, I want to plunder hell to populate heaven. That's what you're saying, Loretta. That's right. So, Loretta, you get back to earth. You have these awesome words, uh, but what did he tell you about your heart? You just had two heart attacks. He told me that when I, he sent me back to earth, he said, you will have a heart of a 13-year-old child, and you, that heart will sustain you until I bring you back to heaven. So the doctor called the ambulance. He went with me to the hospital. The two doctors got in an argument. So I called my doctor to my bedside and I wanted to know why they were arguing. And he said, well, my friend out here is telling me that you couldn't have had two heart attacks, not even one. You have a heart of a 13 year old child. So then I told him that when I died, I went to heaven. But uh, how did he know that Jesus had told you you were going to have the heart of a 13 year old? Well, he didn't know that. I didn't tell him that. And, and, but in reality, could you tell a difference in your heart? Well, sure, I was alive. <laughs> well, they obviously. They pronounced me dead. They pulled the sheet over my head. Now, what I meant was, did you feel, I'm just curious. You know, I'm a curious kind of guy. Did you, did you have more energy? Did you? I did, and I felt real young. And, and, and you pray for people to have new hearts. Oh, I surely do. Almost every day of my life, someone in this ministry gets a new heart. You know, I, I want to build people's faith because in a moment, there's going to be an explosion of creative miracles. There's going to be an explosion of God's Spirit. There, oh, someone's back has just been healed. And if you walk, you'll find out that you with a bad hip, you've got a new hip. Uh, Loretta, tell me a few people that have been healed that you've prayed for. Well, <clears throat> I got a, I got an uh, email this week. A man said, you called me out in a meeting and said, stand up, young man, you're getting a new heart. He said, you left town and I've never seen you since. But he said, I got a brand new heart that day and I've had it for 10 years. And um, a lady was at my meeting last week and she said, you were in California seven years ago and you walked down the aisle and you said, stand up, lady, you're getting a healed of cancer of the stomach. And she said, I had a malignant tumor. I got healed that night. I never wrote and told you. 
But I found out you was going to be here tonight and thought I'd come over and tell you. I've been now, healed seven years. Now, when uh, do you hear? Do you? How do you know that you, uh, that person is going to be healed? How do you know that? Well, I have a little voice that speaks right here in my ear. <laughs> and uh, a lot of times my hand will get hot. And when that gift comes up on me, then the Lord will just say it. Now, do you Sometimes I, I have seen it in a TV screen. At different times, it would come up like a TV screen. Most of the time, I just hear the Holy Spirit speak to me. Give me an example of what you see on a TV screen. When I see on a TV screen, it'll come up like a, I'll see your whole body. And if you've got a tumor in the brain, God will show me exactly what it is. And he'll give me a name to call it. Uh, it this is such a phenomenal gift. Do you have to lay hands on people for no. them to be healed? No. The Lord told me in heaven, I, he never needed my hands. He said, you just speak the word. I'm giving you an anointing to speak the word. But he said, if you ever touch anyone, always remember, they'll feel my hands first. But now, he said, I don't need your hands. Hmm. As a matter of fact, all he needs you is to, is, is to speak what he says. Uh, Jesus said, I only do what I see my Heavenly Father mm -hmm. doing. It sounds to me like that's where you're at. What it is, Sid, and you know a lot of times we rent buildings and the Lord and I, we kind of have a deal. I just pick up the key and I rent the buildings because somebody's got to go pay the bill and pick up the key. And when I rent the building, then I say, Lord, now it's your job. And we've had people, we've had people within miles. In fact, we've had it recorded. People got here within 500 miles when I picked up those keys and rented the building. Now, when we come back from the break, what is going to happen to people when you pray for them? Well, they're, some of them is going to fall out and hit the floor, but they're going to get healed, whatever they need, because the power of God will just fall in the whole house, wherever they are. And now, you've done this on television before. You were with the network that we're on right now, and what did they report to you happened? They reported to me every call that came in, and we broke the record there from any calls that's ever come to that station. They said every person who called in said when she said the prayer, the power of God hit the whole house. A lot of them said we went out and the power was out for a long I, time. I heard the presence of God was so strong for four days after you were there. Yeah, that's what the general manager told me. About two weeks after that, he said... The power was so strong for four days, we could hardly any of us stand up. And he said, I'm a oh. professional drummer. I'll play for you anytime just to stay under that anointing. <laughs> well, let me tell, talk about under that anointing. I have your book, Is Anybody Up There? And you know, th you know the thing that impresses me most about this book? Yes, there are wonderful miracles to build faith. But what impresses me the most, Loretta, about this book is I feel God when I read it. I feel his presence. It, it's like I can be very unspiritual and I'll pick this book up and I'll start reading it and all of a sudden the presence of God comes on me. I believe this would be true of anyone that reads this book, but listen, I know you're not gonna, I don't have to tell you not to go away. You're not gonna go away. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with the Loretta Blassing Game. Loretta died from a double heart attack, came back after going to heaven, and was told by Jesus she would have the heart of a 13-year-old. The doctor, not hearing this conversation, says, I don't understand it, but you have the heart of a 13-year-old. But Jesus said that everyone she'd pray for that th there would be creative miracles. And since that point, there are people getting new hearts. Cancer is disappearing. How many people have you prayed for with cancer that have not been healed? Just two in 49 years. Okay, listen. Zip, pray. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's just this simple. It's the Holy Spirit of God that's going to manifest the workings of miracles and the gift of faith right now. So all you have to do is just receive. Don't pray, don't do anything, don't bend over, don't do anything. Just receive the power of God now. In the name of Jesus, I speak you healed of cancer, leukemia, go in the name of Jesus. Brain tumors, go in Jesus' mighty name. Be created, every organ right now, whatever organ you need, just receive it. Hearts, legs, ears, eyes, someone just, you, you lost your eye because of cancer. In the name of Jesus, receive that miracle now and that eye you will be able to see through right now in Jesus' name. Deafness go in the name of Jesus. 
Go in Jesus' mighty name. Now just receive the power of God. Every person in the house, receive it now in Jesus' name. Well, I don't know about anyone else, but I can sure, I'm receiving, I can sure feel the presence of God. It's that same presence of God that is on your book as anybody up there. But you move in prophecy. Has God told you things about uh, what will be happening shortly in the United States or Israel that you can share? Well, I know that Israel, the Lord has been speaking to me, is going to have one of the greatest moves of God they've ever had because God is going to answer prayer. The Jew and Gentile are going to come together like you spoke about in your book, which, by the way, your book changed my life, The Incomplete Church. Thank you. And you answered something in there about Ezekiel 47. I've been asking God for a long time because God had given me revelation on that, but I didn't have the Jewish part like you did. So I just suggest everybody make sure you get his book. It's changed my life, I can tell it, you. It's a, Ezekiel 47 talks about a double river. And when the two come together, there's life that goes wherever that double river goes. And the double river is the Jew and Gentile, one new man, one in Messiah. And Sid, it talks about in the book of Ezekiel that every person will be healed. You know, the Lord gave me Ezekiel 47. I didn't understand all of it when he told me all would be healed. I read your book and I said, now I understand this, Lord. I've been doing it, but I've always said, Lord, show me greater revelation on this. And I got it when I read that book. God is going to answer prayer. There's going to be a great move of God in, in Jerusalem. There's going to be a lot of disasters in a lot of uh, cities and areas. Like I mentioned to you the other day, California and different ones. But at the same time, it will be like when Azusa Street was poured out in California. They're the worst earthquake they have ever had up in San Francisco. So I, I wish it didn't take tragedy to bring people to the Lord. But this harvest has got to come in, Sid, as well as you know. The Jew and the Gentiles have got to meet together. All denominations have got to come together for this harvest to come in. And the Lord is, says it's going to come before he comes back. So the disaster will be, bring the greatest harvest we've ever had. Now, have God told you things that were going to happen in the past that have come to pass? Could you give me a couple well, examples? Well, he told me that whole cities would be just wiped out. He said, I'm going to lift my hand off of cities and the raft of God will come. It was frightening when he said that. I said, Lord, I've always preached a good message, you know, the good news. But he, he said, people have trusted everything and everybody but me. I'm going to make people trust me because I'm still their God. After he told me that uh, the flood hit New Orleans, I had just been on one of the largest TV stations in, in Dallas, and I told that, that whole cities would be wiped out, would have no grocery store, no banks, no hospitals, and everything that I told on television happened two weeks later. And, uh, you know, the Bible says nothing will happen what he won't reveal it to the prophets before time. And the Lord said people are looking to the government and this and that, but he said, I'm the source. He said... To Jeremiah, you know, I spoke to you once, you didn't hear, but the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the second time. Call unto me, God says, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you know not. And so God still wants to be the source. He's jealous of us. Now, there are people watching us right now, Loretta, that are jealous of your gift. And they would like to operate in the same type of gifting. Can they lay hands on the sick and see people recovered? Can they speak it and see people recovered in the name of Jesus? They can, uh, and there can be an impartation. The only thing I always say to people, just remember what the Apostle Paul said, walk worthy of the vocation of your calling. And I didn't get this overnight. Uh, I got the gift overnight, but I've had my challenges in this ministry to stay in ministry, not jump ship. Uh, you say, what kind of challenge? Well, I've been my only child, six brothers and sisters. Believe it or not, I've never been late for a meeting or counsel one in 27 years. So I, how did that happen? Because I made the call and commitment to God. And we have to commit and then stay committed. So in effect, what you have to do is what Abraham did. Abraham prayed, Hineni, here am I. Use me, God. If that's the prayer of your heart right now, 
Loretta, would you pray for an impartation of this gifting? You said you don't have to lay hands on people. That That's means right. they're going to catch I'm that gonna speak impartation. The word and you just catch it and don't pray. Like I say, sometimes people get carried away. Pray. Don't pray. Just receive. You know, I find that too. When people are praying, it's sort of like uh, they're on AM and I'm on FM. But I say, just be still and receive it. Just receive There's it. There's time to receive. The Holy Spirit's going to do the imparting. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let the power of the Holy Spirit of God bring an impartation of ministry now in the name of Jesus, the gifts, the word of knowledge, the workings of miracles, the gift of prophecy, the gift of interpretation, the gift of faith. People need faith, Lord. I release the gift of faith to people now in the name of Jesus. Just receive it. And you know what faith the Lord told me one time was? Faith to him is faith in action. Now do something you've never done before. Well, I can tell you one thing you've probably never done before. What Jesus said, those who believe in my name will lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. You say, but uh, people aren't getting healed. Well, how many people are you praying for? Well, I prayed for three people about 15 years ago. No, 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 no. Listen, it's a new season in God. It's a new time. You have just received an impartation. Do not miss what God has for you. Loretta, a last word. Believe God. Believe God and walk with God. And remember, there is a day that He's going to split those clouds and come back. And God wants you to be ready. Do you think it'll, did He tell you whether it would be in your lifetime or you don't know? Well, I don't know, but He just told me to work quickly. He walked in my room a, f a few months back and said, work quickly, Loretta, because I will come soon. Are you ready for Him? You see, the thing is, you will die. <laughs> uh, that's for sure. And you don't know when. Are you ready for him? Or you're going to be ready tomorrow? Well, what happens if you die today? You get it? Your parents didn't raise a dummy. This is your life. This is your eternity. Repent to your sins. God is too good. It's that simple. God is just too good. He's pure love. Repent of your sins. Tell God you're sorry. Tell God you need help to turn from some of these sins. Believe that the blood of Jesus washes away everything you've ever done, and you're like a brand new baby. You've got a new start in life. And then when you're clean, you say, Jesus, I make you my Lord. I want to know you like those people I see on television. I want to know you better than them. I want to have intimacy with you. There is nothing in my life that satisfies me. There's nothing that holds a candle compared to hearing your voice, having a destiny, having a vision, having a purpose, just basking in your love, knowing that when I die, I'll be with you forever in eternity, not being fearful of what's coming on this earth, Jesus, I really want this. And God says, in the day that you seek him with all of your heart, in that day he will be found. And just when this show is over, you make your peace with God. You don't need my words. You need your words. God loves you very much. You are special, special.